Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining me today for Kineo's Totara Office Hours. Today what we're talking about is backing up and restoring courses from one Totara instance to another. Um, it's a feature that I don't think a lot of people know about. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Taylor Craig and I am a platforms consultant here at Kineo. So my job is to travel around, train our clients, work with our clients. Uh, I also work very closely as a part of our implementation team to make sure that you get implemented and fully onboarded as you would expect and hope to be onboarded. So I make sure to train you guys very closely alongside our solution architects who design your solutions. And from there, the rest is uh, just, just fun for me. So I get to train and work with uh, all of our clients. A little bit about office hours for those of you who maybe don't know or haven't joined us before. Uh, what it is, is we do about a 15 to 20 minute how-to presentation or a why does that work that way in Totara type of presentation. If you have any suggestions, please, by all means, click that link in the bottom of the email that I send and it, it should send you to a SurveyMonkey area where you can go and you can provide suggestions for things that you might want to see. Uh, so please feel free to do that. Make any suggestions that you want to. Then what we do after the 15 minutes, we have a clients only Q&A time. That part I do record, but I don't post to YouTube. We only post the first 15 minutes to YouTube as instructional videos. Um, the reason we record the entire thing is because sometimes if you ask some questions that you might think some of your team members might find helpful, you might request the entire recording, and that's perfectly fine, and um, we can definitely provide that to you, but we don't post that out on YouTube for the world to see. So that's a little bit about what office hours are. I'm glad that you guys have joined me. It's basically an hour of free training. So if I don't know the answer, I probably hopefully know somebody who does, and I will track them down until I get it. So again, what we're talking about today, we're talking about backing up and restoring courses. A lot of times people don't realize that you can actually back up that perfect course that you have sitting on your UAT site maybe. Um, you can back that up and then you can restore that over onto your production site. Uh, now typically, just kind of as a disclaimer, we don't recommend that you build all your courses on UAT and back build those there and then put them onto production. The reason I give you that disclaimer is because UAT is just that, user acceptance testing. So it's a test site, and that's what it's there for, and that's the purpose of that particular site. But um, if you do happen to build something out there, or maybe a sandbox site, if you also have a sandbox site with us, and you want to move it over onto production once you're done with it, totally, totally fine and completely and totally doable. So we're going to take a look at how exactly you do that today. So I'm going to come out here. This is my demo site that I like to use all the time. And I have a particular course that I just really like and I use a lot. We typically back it up off of this site and restore it onto our client sites so that you guys have access to it if we're working with you in training or anything like that. We like to try and restore it to your site so that you have access to it um, because it's just some good resources to have. Now guys, I do want to kind of give you a, another little disclaimer. I've got a couple of you in here that I know you have customizations on your site and I know for a fact you have custom modules on your site. The reason I know that is because I have had the pleasure of training you on those things. Okay guys? So some of those modules don't back up. Okay? Um, so if you're using maybe the appraisal tool that was at the system level that's we've pushed down into the course level. Um, if you're maybe using that tool, that particular tool does not back up and restore. Okay, you do have to rebuild those. However, this does work very nicely for all of your core features in, in your system. So I'm going to look up my basics course. I should have two on here. Oops, nope, let's just do... I want to pull a small course today just so it doesn't take a while to back up and because I want you to be able to see that. I can't figure out which one I want. I'm going to use my new employee onboarding course if I can find it. There it is. Okay, so in this particular course I have lots and lots of different resources. I have some topic text, I've got some labels, I've got a page, I've got a web page, I've got a book, I've got some SCORM in here, some forums, some quizzes even. I've got quite a few different things. I've got all my topics named. Lots of different stuff going on in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back it up first. 
So to do that, that's going to be underneath Administration, Course Administration, and I'm going to jump down here to where it says Backup. I'm going to click Backup. And you've got some options. So it's going to ask you, the first thing it's going to ask you is, do you want to include enrolled users? Typically, you don't want to. Uh, because when you're backing these up and using this as an option to back up off of one site and push it onto another site, you don't want any of your test users coming over onto production. You don't want any of that information. So typically, what I say is go ahead and uncheck that box. You're going to notice when I uncheck that box, it grayed out include user role assignments because that would have gone along with those users, so it doesn't matter. Um, then also what it's going to give us the option to do is include any activities and resources, include blocks. So if you have specific blocks placed into your course that you do want to bring across and you want to make sure that they're already turned on when you restore it, you would want to go ahead and include those blocks. Filters, what that's referring to, if you haven't noticed, inside of your courses you have the ability to turn certain things off and on. Those are filters, um, and a lot of times that it's re referring to your HTML editor toolbar. So you're kind of you're turning off uh, maybe the ability to add images in the course or auto linking or something like that. That's what that's referring to is those filters. And then reminders that's going to go along, I believe, with the feedback module. And if you had badges, it would pull those through including calendar events, so that's going to tie it back to face-to-face. -to -face. So quite a few things there. And then also including my question bank, because if you'll remember, I had quizzes in that course. So I do want to include the question bank. I want that to come across with everything, because I don't want to lose my questions. So I'm going to click Next. For those of you using 2.9 and, a, well, 2.9, uh, this is a 2.7 instance that I'm looking at, but if you're using 2.9, it will actually give you a skip to the last step button. If you're using an older version, it is going to have you click through each of these different steps to make sure that you are, in fact, including what you want to. Okay, So just be aware of that. 2.9, you guys get to skip ahead. For everybody else, we get to click through. And, and also in 2.9, you can click through, but you have the option to skip. So what this screen's showing, this is going to be our schema settings screen, and what it's showing me is this is everything I'm going to bring across. I'm bringing the introduction topic, I'm bringing the information inside of that topic, company core values, I'm bringing that, I'm bringing the score. If, say, for instance, I didn't want to bring this core value score, I could uncheck that box. So what it's going to do is it's going to back up everything but that one score. Okay. Uh, so you do have the option to just pull bits and pieces. So if you don't want the entire course, you don't have to pull the entire course. I'm going to pull the whole course because I want you to see it in action. And we're going to say Next. And what it's going to do here is it's going to give you your file name. It's going to give you a really, really long file name. It's going to show a couple of different things in here. You'll notice that the short name of my course, short name of this course I know is NEO uh, for New Employee Onboarding. So it is going to have that in there. It is also going to have the date in which I did the backup. So it's going to have that information as well. And it is also going to have the time that I did the backup in military time or in on a 24-hour clock. So it is going to pull that information as well. Okay. Now, the one thing that you don't want to change, so you can change everything before the dot. You cannot change the dot mpz. So don't change that extension because that is a specific file extension to Moodle, actually. Um, and so you do need that dot mbz extension in order for your file to be read by another Totara instance. Okay. So this is just kind of a refresher. Hey, this is what you're bringing. This is what you're not. All those red X's, that is all referring to user data. So I'm not pulling any user data at this point. I'm just pulling across just the content in the course. And I'm going to say perform backup. That's going to be the one that I want to click on. So depending on the size of your course and depending on your internet speed and depending on all of those good factors, it may take anywhere from a few seconds to maybe a minute to, to back up. Now, if you have an incredibly large course, which is likely if you have a whole lot of SCORM, I would expect for that to take a while. Okay, So keep up with what's going on in your browser. Keep watching your browser. See if it's still, in fact, processing. Um, if it ever does happen to stop processing, uh, you may want to back that course up in chunks. So backing up just one SCORM at a time or something like that. 
So just keep in mind, sometimes some really large forms can kind of cause some issue for you. So it's going to let me know that my backup file was successfully created, and I'm going to say continue. So where this is bringing me, this is going to bring me into my course backup area and then also my user private backup area. It's going to place this information in my user backup area, not the course backup area. Um, so I'm going to see here, you see that I've made lots of backups. Um, I back up lots of courses and restore them in lots of different places. So that's what I'm seeing. But I see today, Thursday the 19th at 1.09 p.m., I see that this is the one I want. So I could either restore this, so I could basically make a copy of it on this particular site, or I can choose to download it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to download this file. So this has a couple of, uh, couple of benefits to it. Not only am I just backing up the course, now I have an entire backup of the course, and as long as I have a Totara instance that's of this version, I can restore it at any time. Um, but also, I can now move this course. So I've just kind of zipped it up into a nice little package, and I'm going to hit Show in Folder because I want to know where it's at. It's just dropping it into my Downloads file, which is fine. I'm going to pull this off for just a second because I'm going to jump into another Totara instance. So this is a completely different Tota instance. However, it is the same version. It is a 2.7 version. Just kind of a little disclaimer and a heads up, you do have the ability to restore into higher versions. So like a 2.9 instance. So say you've got courses in 2.7 and you want to push them into a 2.9 instance. You can do that, um, but it will warn you that you're, you're pushing something from 2.7 into 2.9. There may be some issues. Uh, I've never really experienced any of those issues. Typically, it will take them pretty easily. Um, typically, you don't have huge issues there. However, you may have some issues if you back up something from 2.9 and restore it into 2.7, because there may be new features that you were utilizing in 2.9 that maybe aren't available in 2.7 that aren't backwards compatible. The content sh should still come, but you may lose some functionality there. Okay, So just kind of keep that in mind. So now let's talk about how you actually go for restoring that course onto another system. So I am first going to log into this site. I thought I had done that already. Apparently I didn't. So let me get logged in. You do need to be an administrator. Um, but if you are a teacher in a course or a sorry, a trainer in a course, you can do this, uh, but you have to do it off of the same course, and you would have to replace that course. So there's some things we'll take a look at. So underneath your front page settings, you can do this in a couple of different places. Uh, you can do this from underneath front page settings. You can click on Restore here. I want to show you another place where you can do it. Underneath Site Administration, Courses, Manage Courses and Categories. You can just click on any of your categories where you have a course. Typically, it's a good idea to click on one of those categories with courses in them. Okay, so I have a course here, so I'm going to just click on this course number two. And you'll see here, I also have the option to restore from this course, or I can go into the course. And underneath course administration, I also see the ability to restore several different places to do it. It's going to take you basically to the exact same place. I just wanted to make you aware that there's more than one way to do things. But if you've been in Totara for very long, you're already aware of that, right? So let's go ahead and click on Restore. And now what I need to do is I need to grab that file. So I'm going to pull this back over. Here it is, and I'm just going to drag and drop it in. You do want to make sure that it goes ahead and it loads all the way, sometimes with your themes. So some of you may have a really snazzy, cool theme on your site, and that's really awesome. But sometimes you don't get this nice little progress bar um, letting you know, okay, here I am. This is what I'm doing. I'm actually restoring. Instead, it just kind of sits there, and you think, okay, that was fast. But when in reality what's happening is in the background, that little progress bar is actually running. So just something to keep in mind, something to be aware of. You want to make sure that you give it plenty of time to process. Kind of a little trick here is when it is done processing, it will look like a link. Okay? So if you mouse over it and it doesn't look like a link, it's not done. 
Okay, so just be aware of that because it will immediately error you out if you have not allowed it to load all the way. So just keep that in mind, be aware of that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click the restore button. This is going to bring me to another little wizard type uh, interface, just like we just saw a minute ago. And we have one steps one through seven. Again, in 2.9, it does let you skip to the last step, but I want you to see all of the different steps. So what this is going to show me, it's going to show me the date that the backup was taken. It shows me the version that it was, or the Moodle version. It's going to show me which build that was. It's going to show me the backup version. It's going to give me the URL of the original site. Okay, so this was the original site that we pulled from, so that is absolutely correct. Okay, and now it's going to show me what I did, what I chose. So you chose to back up all of this information. You chose not to bring in this stuff. It's going to show me the details. It's going to show me all the information about the course that it's going to bring in. Again, we've got this user info column saying, hey, it's not bringing that info. That's perfectly fine. We want that. And we see that we've got some other sections here that it's pulling across from the other course. So I'm going to say continue. This screen tends to confuse people a lot of times because it's kind of one of those screens that you have lots, of, like three different options, but you maybe don't realize that you've got three different options. So I want you to pay attention to what those options are. You have the ability to restore as a new course, which is what we want to do in this situation. You can say restore into this course. So if you hit that restore button from within another course, it's going to ask you, do you want to basically merge? this information. So if you were to choose Restore into this course, it's going to ask you, do you want to merge what you have? So basically it's going to take two courses and smush them together. So do you want to merge it or do you want to delete the course that you're currently in and replace it with this new file? Okay, so that's what that's asking you. Or it's going to give you another option to restore into an existing course, which basically it's going to do the same thing. You can say, okay, this is the actual course. I want to replace this course or I want to merge the content. So Keep that in mind, you've got three different options here, and if you were just wanting a brand new course, stick with this. And what it's going to give you, it's going to give you one option underneath this one, restore as a new course, and then you've got to pick which category it belongs into. Now I don't see the category I want. I want the one that's called TC testing. So I'm going to search, and there it is. So it pulled it up, so I'm going to select that one. It gave me a required thing because I had I needed to select a category and I hadn't quite selected it yet. That's why it gave me that error. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to continue. Again, it's going to show me what I brought, what I'm doing. I'm going to say, yep, I'm going to go on to the next. It's going to give me the option to rename this onto this site. So if I needed it to have a different name on this site, I could change that. Same for the short name. If maybe you have a particular naming scheme at your company, uh, you may want to put that in here. If this is your production site, you may want to do that. And we're going to scroll, 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 because it's going to show us everything we did again. And we're going to say next. It's going to just let us review it one more time. So I'm going to just make you a little seasick here real quick, and we're going to scroll past it. And then we're going to say perform restore. We've got this, this is what we do want to do, and then we get a nice little progress bar. Again, depending on your theme, you may or, not, may or may not see that little progress bar. Sometimes that you don't get to see that. When you've done it correctly, it's going to say, hey, good job, you restored this successfully, and then you can say continue. And then at that point, you have a brand new copy of the same exact course on a different site. So you were able to back that information up, you were able to restore it onto another site. So pretty simple, pretty easy to do, just something to keep in mind that you do have the ability to do that. And uh, we just wanted to make you aware. So now I'm going to open the floor up to you guys for any questions, concerns, comments, any of that good stuff. So thank you again for joining me, and I will now unmute you guys. You can also post questions in the question box, um, and I can give you a mic if you would like.